Hello everybody and welcome to our day early comics review video. I'm Jason. I'm Andy. And we're with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. We get our comics a day early so we bag and board them. We take a little break, we read all the big ones, and then we get to review them. We get to, mm -hmm. to talk comics every Tuesday, tell you what issues are good, which ones we like more or less, what's going on in them. However, we do it in a sly, spoiler-free way. <laughs> sly. Yeah, <laughs> like we'll let you know it's a first appearance. We may hint it at death, but we're not going to ruin the read for you. So that's how we do it here. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get started. I read King in Black number four. A very, uh, a very big book. I've been waiting for a while to read. Issue three was really cool. Uh, issue three left us on a cliffhanger where we're wondering who this sort of uh, agent of light might be. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, null is the darkness. Is there an opposite? And if so, can this opposite stop him? Well, in this issue, um, without revealing too much, uh, Dylan Brock is in the clutches of null. Um, you know, Noel's been trying to find him. He's been after him. Last issue, he finally caught up with him. Well, he's got D Dylan, but is it going to go well for him? You know, does Dylan have some tricks up his mm. sleeve? We know he has a, uh, a a great power set that hasn't <laughs> fully been revealed. And uh, let's just say, you know, the characters have been talking about weaponizing him. Spider-Man's <laughs> been like, hey, you don't have to do anything. Uh, you don't have to be a weapon. But at the same time, they just killed his dad. Yeah, so maybe kind of wants to be. Yeah, yeah. So you'll have to see what happens there. But it's definitely um, Dylan Brock against Null. Uh, Null has a lot of heroes still under his sway. There's a mm -hmm. lot of nullified heroes right now. How can they be broken out? I mean, issue five is going to be the last battle. Um, so will it be all the forces of darkness and all and all the dark heroes or will something happen to free them where the heroes will actually get to yeah. take part um so the one thing i will say about this one is kate's draws from deep marvel lore <laughs> in this one uh having to do with this champion of light that's all i'll say i mm -hmm. can't reveal more than that but i mean when i saw it i was like okay wow i'm gonna have to go do a little bit of homework i was homework. about to say when i when you said <laughs> what or who it was you were at the same time online being like what or who is yeah. this yeah i mean <laughs> I, I know about it but you know i, I need to know more about it so yeah. it's still still a very cool issue um you get to see some really cool stuff with dylan brock um the whole sort of is there an opposite of null that gets revealed one way or the other um a lot of revelations in this one saying this up for issue number six so say or, number I was, five. I'm sorry. Say I was a big fan of the miniseries Silver Surfer Black. Okay. What? How would I feel about this issue? Um. Well, I'll I'll tell you, and I, I think this isn't a spoiler to <laughs> I was say. say that cover Sil too. Is... Silver Surfer Black appears in this mm -hmm. issue a good bit. Good. And that's all I can say because if I say more, it's going to reveal, you know, how tied in yeah. he is or not. Um. So you'll just have to read, but he does appear pretty prominently in this issue. Um, I, I'll say I had my theory on it, and it, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So this is the Rivera variant. It's almost a spoiler for last issue, because I think that's the, the classified variant or whatever. Yeah, I think so. They didn't want people to know about it, because, mm -hmm. I mean, these issue, these variant covers are out early. Here is the U-Connecting variant. There we go. Got to find the right angle. <laughs> And then here is for the ambitious, <laughs> the tattoo variant, the uh, pain intolerant. Yep, all, all Andy and I can say to you, uh, Venom and Null and Donny Cates fans, is we dare you. <laughs> Here's the tattoo. You know, you already got the design. Go right to your tattoo artist, slap down a thousand dollars. That's probably the down payment, and be like, get to work. I guess that goes on your back. I don't know. Or it wraps around your arm. It's got to be somewhere with a lot of space. A lot of, it takes off a lot of space. So that's King in Black number four. Really looking forward to number five. Well, I'm going to pick a, a different book to start out with than usual. I'm going to go straight for the more independent and talk about uh, TMNT Last Ronin number yeah, two. Last it's Ronin. been a long, long journey. To even getting to issue two. I believe this is a five issue miniseries. I think you're right. Who knows when this will actually end. 
Yeah. But I am so glad to say issue two did not disappoint. This is such a cool... Uh, it's great for old Turtles fans, new Turtles fans, or if you've never really read a Ninja Turtles book before, but you know in general the characters, this just has such a, like, dare I say, like, Dark Knight Returns for the Ninja Turtles. Like, I feel like it's going to be one of those definitive stories that, you know, we may go back to from time to time and, and pick apart and, and talk about it. Um, That's a very neat comparison. Yeah, yeah. it has it has a lot of those, uh, like, you do find out in this, like, kind of how long it's been since our normal turtle the stories. Normal yeah. Um, I still don't want to reveal who the, the last Ronin is in case, because it's been really hard to get that issue one. That. Yeah. But I feel like people maybe just are finally being able to read it because it is the uh, first printing sold out, second printing sold out, right. third printing we sold out of, but hopefully everyone who wanted it could get it. Uh, yeah. We at had that a lot point. of those for a while. At least. Um, but to see this, turtle at the place they are in um is really neat uh i will say not as much of the art is done by um kevin eastman in this one but there is a very solid chunk that is done by him it's almost like where the the issue one like the last few pages are done by the uh, like ongoing turtles artist this one i would say is the opposite and most of this one's done by that artist and uh, Eastman has a little bit, hmm. but his little bit is the kind of history of how we got to this point. So it's a very vital part, and it feels like, especially with the size of the book, it feels like you're reading a original Turtles comic. It is black and white. It is not in color. It's just like gray tones and everything, and it is such like a cool feeling to read this classic turtle story. Yeah, I mean, that's why Turtles have stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember when I was a real little kid, and Turtles came out, and people snickered about it. They're like, oh, this is so wacky. It's just a drop in the pan. But no, there's something. there was something awesome to those original comics yeah. um, that has persevered all yeah. the way to where they're still doing it. And I will say, this is a very mature book. When there's violence in this, it is pretty there's some some blood in that's, this that's old school turtles and it's old school turtles it, yeah. it definitely feels like the you know not the cartoon turtles this is your they were trained ninjas mm -hmm. um but this one i'll say you'll find out more about what happened to april to casey oh. to splinter to the three other brothers that would all not name which ones are which mm -hmm. but you definitely get that big like okay, here's kind of what's going on. This is the scene setting. We, there's still kind of a moment in time we don't know that's very pivotal, but they're holding back on that. So I know in issue one, I think most people feel like they, they kind of revealed which turtle, but there was still some debate about it. There mm -hmm. was still definitely some debate as to was it really that or where, was it just sort of somebody who didn't know what they were talking about? Um, do you feel it is definitively revealed who the turtle is by the end I of I think point? it is. There's yeah. even a comment made about... I thought you were the blank turtle or whatever. And then they're like, well, things change. I haven't read it, but I bet I already kind of <laughs> know. You already know what saying. word goes in right there. Yeah. Is it tough? Is it leadership? Is it funny? Is it yeah. uh, smart? I mean, <laughs> it could be any one of those, but mm. uh, it's not a spoiler. Like, it's been out a long time, so most of you know who the turtle is. Okay. But I... It was worth the wait. To that end is... all debate. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, so my biggest takeaway is this is probably my pick of the week. This is worth the wait. You know, it's it's still, it's an $8.99 book, so it's a big book. And it just feels like every page there is just content and so much emotion in it. Mm. Just, I feel like because the Turtles had the original series and the cartoon, you kind of have like this personal connection to them, this sympathy, mm -hmm. even though they're separate, you're like, I still feel bad for them because at one point they were fun loving and they were into pizza and all that. And this shows you how far it's gone from that. Or maybe is there some of that still left inside of the turtles? So well, I, I say this comic sounds so good that bag and board companies need to go ahead and make bags <laughs> and boards that size. actually fit this comic, yeah, just for it. You hear that Ultra Pro? You hear that BCW? <laughs> They're going to be called Ronin size. <laughs> they, there you go. Get the Ronin size bags. 
on the production line right now. It's like Golden, but a little bit bigger, and it's like a <laughs> magazine, but a little bit thinner. You can I... start designing them and producing them and getting them from China. They'll be out long before issue five, <laughs> yeah. based on how long it took. Yeah, we'll get to the director's out. cut of issue two and three by the time that those are yeah. out. So. Uh, I did want to point out there is the uh, variant cover. This is Sophie Campbell. Really nice. It's That's really dark, so, cool. so it's hard to see, but uh, in person, it's really nice. Definitely their intent, though. You know, you look at yeah. it, it's like it, from the shadows. What I also really appreciate they do is um, all of these, issue one and issue two, I'm guessing it's going to be for all of them, we're going to have a ton of variant covers. The final page shows you like a big grid of all the covers. So if oh. you can't get them, you can have the fun of looking through them and seeing oh, what place had this one, and then what artist did it, so. And I believe we were selling this one for, did you say 25 25 dollars. 25 so that's... For the one in tens that we have, while supplies last. While supplies last. If you're local or you have a pull box with us. If not, sit back, enjoy the show. We just like to talk yeah. about comics. So, uh, next up, I read The Ultimate, <laughs> the, the one that came after the penultimate issue of Next Batman. This is number four. This is the last issue of it. So without spoiling anything, I do have a few things to say about this. First off, this does not do everything that I felt it was going to. Um, in a lot of interviews, John Ridley said the next the next Batman was going to save Gotham. I feel like he meant later. Like this is just <laughs> the beginning of him. And you know, in four issues, how much do you really want that? I mean, yeah. that, he you don't have enough time to tell a tale about a brand new Batman and show how he saves Bat Gotham in a way that Bruce Wayne never could. Because mm -hmm. that's what he said in interviews. So if you dial it back and take the story for what it is, that aside, it's a very good story. It has a lot to do with family. It's a lot to do with the foxes and their different perspectives and what sort of living in Gotham under uh, I, I guess for better, no better words, the shadow of Batman has done to them, um, you know, and now we have a member of the family hiding it from the others that he is the new Batman. So really, that to me is the crux of this, and this is, the, the ending has a lot to do with that. It has a lot to do with their family, uh, their different positions on things, including justice. This also has a lot to do with what is justice, what is morality, when should people go to jail? What happens when your jailers turn evil? So a lot to think about as long as you're not expecting this to end in some super grandiose way. I think there's more of that to come. Now, when I, I was about know. to say, I, I would wait any day now or, you know, to find out that they are doing an ongoing next Batman series. We already know that there's a um, like prequel comic coming out. Yeah. And we know that there's going to be a book called Future State Gotham. It is only a matter of time before there is a ongoing next Batman by John Ridley. Yeah, so that is my spoiler for review. Dial back expectations. Take it for what it is. You're getting to know more of the character and how he feels being the next Batman and what's going on with his family and his views on justice. It does all that. But saving Gotham, that's a whole different story that is yet to be told yet. <laughs> and we saw he a dark a... detective. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. He is very wet behind the ears, too, which is interesting. You haven't read a Batman like this since, like, year one. Um, and so I enjoyed those parts of it. Now, it has two backup stories that I, I really enjoyed a lot um, that, in a way, were, were a little more faster paced. Um, it's the second uh, backup story, uh, the Batgirl story, where they're in the magistrate prison and they're trying to get out. Uh, they're seeing if they can join the resistance, possibly in time for Nightwing number two, which I'll be talking <laughs> about later. Um, funny enough, because it, it does, in a way, connect, um, at least character-wise, not, not necessarily timeline-wise. They didn't say, oh, they went right from there to there. Um, but the Batgirl's backup story is really cool. And the one I liked, I think, even more, there is the Gotham City Sirens uh, backup story, um, with uh, Poison Ivy, Catwoman, and the new Android character, Dee Dee. Basically, they take Dee Dee out for a night on the town <laughs> while they're being chased, okay? So they're fugitives from the magistrate. They decide, we're going to show you what it's like to, to be a hero woman with us. They have this great wild time, uh, and it ends it ends kind of sadly, honestly. Like it, it, I, th I was like, oh, this is whimsical. This is really fun. But then it got kind of deep and dark at the end. Uh, I really liked it. So the backup stories were well worth it. Um, I, I thought that this uh, was worth the admission. 
Um, we got one variant by the illustrious Jim Lee. It's such a good cover. I know. I know. Jim Lee, like anybody who's been collecting him since he began, you've got an awesome collection at this point because he's done so <laughs> many good covers. So that is your Jim Lee cover. Yeah, I feel like we have not seen the last of Nick's Batman. We do still have Dark Detective number four to come out, which has been relatively tied in with maybe not next Batman, but with Gotham in general and Magistrate and yeah. how that's being taken care of. I you could maybe even see a like team up between Bruce and uh, next Batman and next in Batman. in it. Like who knows if this is going if that could actually be the like final fight in well, this Dark, story. Dark Detective is told five years after this. So, I mean, I, I think with this, we're seeing the Resistance building up fighting uh -huh. the Magistrate and Batman sort of cutting his teeth next Batman. And I think five years from now, possibly in that last Dark Detective, we're going to see really the beginning of the end, like the fall of yeah. the Magistrate. Yeah, I'll so. be interested to see what happens with yeah. that. To see if that, that story is tied up with a bow at the end or... Is this setting up a whole like ultimate universe for the DC stuff where they're an ongoing threat? Yeah, could be could be cool. So I will talk about a future state book now. This is Superman World of War. There's a Worlds of War. Worlds of War. It's plural. Um, so I I was really quick to read this one because issue one uh, was definitely not what I expected. When you see the covers and you see Superman. Yeah. Uh, in chains, in his uh, He-Man kind of loincloth fighting in an arena, you're like, oh, this is going to be an all-out action, just slugfest. And it turns out most of issue one was uh, about a girl in Smallville learning yeah. what Superman meant to people. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of teased at the end, like, and now we'll see that big fight. Uh, I will say... The big fight takes place, but still in the kind of spirit of how issue one was. So rather than this being like this big, violent fight, um, I've realized this this two-issue series has been more about what does Superman mean to people, and then, as you know, Superman's gone. He's not on Earth. People are wondering, is he ever going to come back? Did he die or whatever? This is kind of a big story about why Superman will would always come back to save people. Mm. And that is told in a very interesting way um, through analogy and through, um, you know, kind of the, the view of Clark Kent, too. So, really interesting story. You do see Superman fighting and why he's fighting in this arena and what does that mean to him. Um, but this one, I would say my favorite part of this issue was there is a couple of backup stories in it as well. And one of them is uh, Black Racer. Yeah, we that, have Mr. The, Miracle the new Black Racer. and Black Racer, which completely took me off guard that I would like it as much as it did. Because it felt like such a, not an afterthought, but like, why is Black Racer out of like all of these characters, you know, who was originally a new god? who is some dude with, with cosmic skis that <laughs> chased people down because he was kind of like death. Like, why is this a story in here? And why does this character even need shelf space during this event? Um, and it turns out there's this new black racer. If you read the first one, you know um, she's a, a younger character who's now in the position of this black racer. And this second part is just really cool. The, the kind of what... A black racer does and what's it mean it's way more action-packed huh. um and I, I forgot which book we found out that that character is going to appear in but that character is going to be in something after this this is a new whole new character and really cool to see like maybe what their power sets are yeah and the story takes place on world war world so while superman is fighting in this arena um, you can tell it's like being like broadcast. Well, she breaks into the room where they're broadcasting it, and it's just a bunch of aliens like sitting around computers, being like, <laughs> "Cut to camera three, get a good shot of him." So it's it's also the main story, but from a different perspective too, which I thought was 
a really cool um, fleshing out of what's going on. So I recommend this one, not only because the Superman story is really interesting, but the Black Racer story is uh, probably by far one of my favorite little little nuggets that have been on She's these. got a great character design, and there's mm -hmm. a lot to be said for that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and uh, we're actually sold out of the variant, so I couldn't even show off the variant, <laughs> but the variant is really cool. I just don't have one in hand to show off. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Ha Ha number two. That is out this week. So number one was a big hit. It is done by the gentleman who does Ice Cream Man, which I've been reading since the beginning. I like horror anthology, so right away I, I knew that uh, that was a cut above. So with Ha Ha, this is a miniseries he claims is going to link in with Ice Cream Man by the end. I think it's six issue miniseries. It is all about different people who dress up as clowns and their lives. That might sound uh, like an unappealing premise to some people, but in the hands of this writer, it's really good if this is what you're looking for, because these are dark tales. Uh, I read this. It is a very dark, <laughs> twisted, um, sad tale that I, when I ended reading it, I was like, I'm glad this is fiction. That's like what if, you told if, me. You're if, like, I'm glad this wasn't a real thing. <laughs> if this were a real person's life, I would have been like, I just feel bad about this. Um, but, you know, he always leaves you with a lot to think about. Um, basically, this woman, she is a clown. She's also a mother, though. And uh, she might have some mental problems. She's trying to raise her daughter. Um, and so her sort of clown ideas bleed into real life. And she tries to teach her daughter how to grow up and how to be a woman. Uh, tries to take her to this uh, very fun, happy place that she believes, um, you know, will, will be good for them to go to. And along the way, a lot of bad things are implied. <laughs> a lot of bad things happen. And I can't say it has a happy ending at all. It has the opposite. So if you like a comic that, that makes you have the feels and uh, you, you want to read something that's dark, this is the one to go for. I doubt there's any comic that came out this week that is darker than this comic, but very well told. It's not just twisting the screws for no reason. Um, you know, there's a reason that, that art spans from, you know, really happy stuff to really sad stuff. We don't all want to just read, mm -hmm. you know, good happy tales all the time. And so this one will tip the balance in your mind and you'll be ready to, to go uh, watch the end of It's a Wonderful Life over and over <laughs> again. Um, so. so based on how Ice Cream Man is structured, it doesn't necessarily lend itself to having tie-ins. Do you see how this is possibly going to... I, I could definitely see it. I think Ice Cream Man could just appear in this. So Ice Cream Man appears anywhere there's misery. He often is affecting people's lives in little ways to push them into the misery. Mm -hmm. So he could be a part of any of these tales, to tell you the truth. Um, and, you know, ice cream clowns, you know. Yeah, it's it's weird how it's like, you would think, well, then he would appear in every issue because they're all separate stories. But it'll be, it'll be interesting to see in the last issue how they maybe give a nod to his involvement. Yeah, I mean, for those of you who read Ice Cream Man, you know, Ice Cream Man, he's got more of a, of a mythos behind him than just, you know, I'm a Crypt Keeper. They've started kind of telling there's some cosmic tale behind him, hmm. too. And so, I mean, there's a lot of ways it could link because of all that. Um, here is the variant by Simmons. Just a really happy cover. Yep. So, I mean, it's a great cover, though. I mean, it, it is. It's really striking. So, makes you definitely hits you with the feels, but not the good kind. They're kind of like <laughs> I don't want to stare at this for too long because it's it's getting real creepy. Yeah. Okay, so next up, I will talk about a book that uh, was very very interesting, and it is great for old school X Men fans. So this is X Men Legends, and this uh, the job of this series. Uh, it seems like this first story is only going to be two issues long, but is to kind of wrap up storylines that never got the proper um, finish to them. And I believe in most cases, uh, if not all, it's done by the original writers who did them at the time. Right. So this one uh, explores a, I believe, kind of a drop story or uh, a story that just didn't really get its chance to completely play out about the missing third Summers brother. So we know okay. we have... Um, Scott Summer Cyclops. Mm. Uh, he has his brother Havoc. Havoc yeah. 
Uh, there is a third brother, which was kind of teased, but then kind of forgot about. And so for years, people have been like, seems like something that should be like noted, like this family, I mean, their father's Corsair, you know, they, they have a very like rich family. And then it's like, and there's this one spot you were not talking about. Well, this goes into that. And it takes place in the time frame of, it even tells you like the, the events in this take place, like before issue this or whatever. This is great if you have been a long time X-Men reader or you've just recently, you know, gone back and read a bunch of, um, like, 90s X-Men stories, because that's roughly when this takes place. This may be a little bit harder if you have not, uh, if you're not too familiar with the X-Men of the time. So this mm. definitely takes place during a lot of, like, the Shi'ar stuff uh, with uh, Lalandra and kind of the Star Jammers, that whole thing. Um because we learned that the third Summers brother has a lot to do with the Shi'ar. And so I initially was having a little bit of trouble following what was going on until I got my footing. Once I did, once I was like, okay, this is before this happened, but after this happened, right. I know why the current um, X-Men team is made up of these people. Um, you know, even, you know, Cable, who is a... Summers, uh, you know, his last name is Summers. He's got a very uh, messy history and future, but he does make an appearance. And so you're kind of like, okay, so this is like post cable being introduced, all this stuff. Um, but the artwork is by Brett Booth, who did a lot of artwork on X-Men back in the day during the 90s, has a very um, 90s feel to it, but in a good way, not in a like a, not in a, this feels dated, but like they took the costumes and stuff of the time and they look good, especially mm. with modern coloring and everything. Um, so this is going to be two parts. If you are a big fan of like the Summers family, I, I really like Havoc. I think Havoc is a really cool character. Um, deals a lot with him. This new brother. Uh, it's, it's not all uh, happy times when they meet. Like when most X-Men meet each other. <laughs> It doesn't start off with just a friendly handshake. Yeah. So I think this is going to be a cool place for maybe um, some new characters to be introduced that could be used now. You know, we have this new Summers brother. Now jump ahead to, like, Hickman's run. Well, why isn't he there? What's right. going on what with him? Is he... Sense. So Let's, let's retcon him in. <laughs> yeah. He's been floating in space or something. Um, so that, that element's really cool. Very classic X-Men. So recommended for that. Or... Uh, if you kind of like that old school feeling of just jumping into a story and trying to get your feet, which is how most um, older comic fans, how we got into it, it's like we didn't wait for a number one. We kind of jumped in and we're like, yeah. this character's cool. I want to go read about them. Along the way. This yeah. could be a great entry point to be like, you read this and then it makes a reference to, um, I think there's even references like Captain Marvel and stuff. It's like, well, now I want to go read that. I want to read this. So it's really good at what it does and you can check it out for yourself if that is like an x-men story you want to tell because it is dripping with classic x-men feel so there is also a few variants for it so we have the uh coelho connecting variant and this connects i believe more than just two issues so this should have uh some of whatever the next story is involving the x-men yeah, Coelho's been doing some very good covers. Yes. Uh, it's suddenly a name that's starting to pop up. Yep. There's always those that, like, you hear it here and there, and then suddenly it's like, oh, they're doing, like, a cover got, for a Got my own Coella and Gleason lately. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Gleason, this could be my favorite cover. This is the Patrick Gleason that really highlights uh, Cyclops and the Summers family. Then we have, of course, the John Tyler Christopher action figure variant you get that old school um toy biz box for cyclops and then we have the one in 25 daughter men that we are selling for 20 but want to make sure you can see it really cool cover that's got a bunch of time frames on here you have like uh, uh all new x-men or uh 
Yeah, New X Men, Wolverine during the Grant Morrison run where he had the leather coat. Mm. You've got like classic Jean and Cyclops. You've got Iceman with the boots. So it kind of gives you an idea of what the series is going to be with jumping around in different times. All right, so continuing with Marvel, I read the latest Miles Morales, which is a King and Black tie-in. I collect all the Miles stuff, but I've also been reading King and Black, so definitely I pulled this one aside and read it today. This is issue number 23. Um, so it, Miles has to try to help a nullified Ms. Marvel. Kamala Khan, who, you know, typically he is friends with. But when people are nullified, you know, they're not, they're, they're typical uh, chipper, nice selves. Um, they say a lot of mean things that they normally wouldn't, and they kind of attack you a lot. They're a little more lot. sassy than normal, too. They tend to have more zingers. The, the, the cover is a little bit of a hint as to how it goes when he tries to, to, <laughs> give, her, to give her a hand. <laughs> he kind of gets one back in the form of a fist. Uh, it's a very cool action-packed issue um, as stated Miles tries to help Ms. Marvel but at what cost uh, I'll just leave that little expression there at what cost does is is he able to save her if he even is um, do we know if that's gonna be is that the only Miles tie-in is it a one-shot issue I know it's in the normal numbering but does it say, like, to be continued or anything? It seems like this was it. Okay. It seems like this was it. Um, then I also read Planet of the Symbiotes number two. So this was neat. This was a two-part story. It had two different stories in it that are connected by the fact that Null is attacking the entire Earth. The first one had Kid Kaiju. So it's a lot of Kaiju versus... <laughs> Null Dragon action. Wow. Which is just fun. It's just really cool. Um, so we have this. So lots of kaiju stuff. And let me let me show you the, the variant real quick, actually. Variant's really cool. It is so Godzilla. Yeah, with the variant. And the second part, I would need to make sure not to reveal too much, because there's there's a revelation on the very last page. Okay, so the, the second story is about the Prowler oh. and what he's been up to. And uh, without revealing too much, it's not a first appearance or anything like that. But the Prowler, he has something else he can change into these days now that he's more of a hero. And you get to see some of that. Hmm. So Speaking of uh, Miles, it's his, uh, his uncle, Prowler. Oh, really? Isn't Prowler? I didn't even realize that. Yeah, the purple masked Prowler? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's his uncle, at least in uh, the Ultimate Universe he was. Interesting. Well, I had more, have more links to the two <laughs> comics I chose to put together than I knew. So, next up, this is a book that I didn't know a whole lot about. I know this was a digital first. And now it was collected. This is uh, Truth and Justice. So from what I can gather, what ties these together, because there's gonna it's gonna be a mini series, and each issue follows different characters. It's almost like a Brave and the Bold, where you have a character that people are a little bit more familiar with, and then maybe some characters that people aren't as familiar with. Um, so this first one, the main hero of it is of course Vixen, who hasn't got a lot of. Uh, playtime recently but is a really interesting character her power set of course is she can um kind of mimic the powers of animals very much like kind of what they've made animal man into but she can you know, like call on different things so she can fly she can have you know major strength and everything um and she's also like a supermodel at the same time <laughs> so in it she's like doing her uh, like photo shoot that she's not super excited about how they've uh, set it up and everything but when danger calls she goes into action as vixen um, this one has her teaming up with dr. mist and Impala and those are characters I don't know maybe dr. mist I've read something with him before but they're definitely characters I was not super familiar with. And this really 
brought them out of like, oh, these are cool characters. I could really like see them being in other things. Got really cool costumes. Um, they fight uh, what is essentially kind of a uh, character with a god complex in the most superhero way possible where they believe they're a god. Um, and it's just a one and done story. So it's really fun. It's definitely kind of a uh, departure from Future State and all of that. It's its, its own standalone story. Um, I believe the next issue is supposed to have Superman in it. So, fun series to get onto if you want to read some really good one shots. And it has, uh, let's see, this really nice uh, Quintana variant. Oh, yeah, with that. Really, really nice. So, just a really fun. The Eye of the Tiger, <laughs> the Eye of the Leopard, or the Puma, or the Panther. Hard to tell when it's just a shadow. Of them. <laughs> but, yeah, really fun, single issue good one and done read okay so i read future state nightwing number two i really liked the first one in the first one the next batman shows up at nightwing's hideout unannounced to you know just be like hey guess who i am and uh nightwing shows him that you can't just do that <laughs> <laughs> and you can't just show up and go hi i'm batman we should be friends uh but by the end of the issue the magistrate was coming through the door so they they had to sort of learn to trust each other this issue is their first team up this is the first mm. dick grayson nightwing teaming up with next batman uh i really enjoyed it for that i i knew issue one ended with that promise issue two came through and you get to see a legit cool team up you get to see them do different things play off each other um it is not your typical batman and robin though does it's, it feel more like peers or like, you know, they're closer I, to the same age? I wouldn't even say peers. I would almost say it's uh, instead of Batman and Robin, it's Robin and Batman. Oh, okay. So next Batman has some good moves, but Nightwing is far his superior. Also, have you ever considered if Nightwing would ever get his own, you know, Nightwing mobile? <laughs> well, you may have to read this issue to see if he's ever done that. Hmm. <laughs> Um, on top of that, the last thing I'll say is this links in, in a way, with the Batgirls story from Next Batman number four. Because in Batgirls, they're all in the magistrate prison trying to break out. And let's just say every Gotham hero of the Resistance shows up by the end of this. Wow. And it's pretty cool to see like big, them all. Big team up. Correct. Moment. Yeah. So, uh, so that was the second Nightwing. I enjoyed this immensely. If you read the first one, you thought it was cool. This is a really good capstone to that two-part series. And we have the variant. The very close-up variant. Yeah, by, by Scott. Real cool. And Nightwing does use this uh, weapon quite prominently in this one. So... So I'll talk about a Future State book. This was probably my favorite Future State book I read this week. And this is Catwoman, Future State Catwoman number two. So it's the final part of the Catwoman story. And last we left Catwoman, they are on a like a train heist when you find out kind of what the, uh, the payload on the train is. You realize it's pretty important. So this takes place pretty early on in the future state um, timeline where it takes place before Dark Detective. So at this point, everyone believes Batman is dead, uh, that Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne is dead. This explores what does Catwoman know about this? Because if this is following the, you know, the current timeline, if it's a possible future of the current timeline, then you know, their relationship is pretty far along. Mm -hmm. And... I'll say she she finds out in this issue uh, one way or another if he's alive or dead. Whether she finds out the truth or not, that's another thing. But on this train uh, is some pretty high-level magistrate people. And Catwoman also does her best to take them down, too. It was really fun. It is a lot of action. I mean, it is your, like, speeding train... Uh, action movie where we've got to like take over this train one car at a time and you know you're fighting ninjas and and bad guys in each <laughs> of the compartments and uh there's a little snow piercer <laughs> a little snow piercer especially given the kind of dystopian feel of gotham but this is 
really fun. Catwoman leading her her team of strays, which are not a team of of feral cats. Unfortunately, it's 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 people, but uh, yeah, a really good character development for Catwoman, and a really fun issue overall. Especially the ending really uh, settles some stuff about uh, when you're reading Dark Detective and some of the stuff that comes later. It gives you a good idea of. Um, how it all got to this and what the characters uh, know and what that means to them. So definitely with Bruce Wayne, I feel like in Dark Detective, they may even allude to some of the stuff in this. Um, there is a really great variant. This is the Habachi variant. You get a good look at her cool new costume with all its magnetic bits to stick to trains. Really, really cool. Okay, so I read Hollow Heart number one. I mean, look at this cover. It just stands out so great. Although I have to say, if I were to put a quarter in a gumball machine, I would not want this head to come... <laughs> to, to roll out. Exactly, look at me and judge that I'm, uh, I'm spending my money in that way. This was a very weird issue. I mean, look at the cover. You're going to expect that. But this is the sort of comic that makes me want to have a discussion with people who particularly like indie comics because this is not one for people who are on the fence. This is very deep <laughs> set indie. Um, so I'll tell you the premise and then I'll tell you sort of how it's written. The premise is there is this person and they've just taken the person's guts and scooped it into this machine they're keeping alive. It's a gross term. They scooped his guts. Yeah, it's hard to find. <laughs> he's, he's human chum inside of a suit. But... What I'll say about it is, okay, so there's the premise. And right away, you know, some of you are going, I don't really want to, I don't want to read that. And others are going, that's interesting. It's something I haven't heard before. But in this first issue, you don't learn why. You don't really learn how. This is a slow burn. It's more, here's a really weird setting. We're just going to put you in it. They've got this guy in this suit. They're working on him. He, he doesn't want to be there. He has no freedom. It's more... There are more lines from the person who repairs him than him. Hmm. Uh, it's a very weird slow burn tale that I suspect is going to be more about the characters than the actual setting at hand. But mm -hmm. I'm not sure. We're only one issue in. So if you like really weird indie, if you like stories where um, the, the plot, at least at first, takes a backseat to whatever um, the characters are thinking to whatever they have going on, this might be for you. Um, it is, like I said, it's just a deeply indie work. Um, but if you don't want that, if you want a tale where right away, you know, if it, if it catches you, it clips along, I wouldn't say this is for you. Some really good covers, though. We have uh, some variants by, this is the Hickman variant. Does the goldfish make a, an appearance? That's on a lot of the covers. There is somebody telling a tale about something happened in their childhood with this goldfish. Oh, okay. And it's told in the background throughout the story. Oh, okay. Yes, you know, so it's one of those. So it's not floating in there with his guts. No. Oh. Uh, at least that hasn't been revealed yet. This one, this is the Daniel variant. That one's cool. It looks like a classic like G.I. Joe cover. I know, but don't let this fool you. The the feel of the comic is not like this at all. <laughs> it's a great cover. But the feel of the comic, I'd say out of all the covers, it feels most like this one, in my opinion. Huh. Just, you know, really weird setup and setting, and then doesn't really apologize or explain it, mm. and just says, hey, if you want some different sort of writing, here it is. Uh, not for everyone, but I think some people are going to absolutely love it. Or definitely for some people. Correct. Like, really like that. That indie feel. Yeah. Okay. I will talk about uh, real quick, just quickly. I'll go over. Um, this is Future State Shazam number two, and the reason I'll only quickly go over it is because this is kind of a secret, ongoing story that started in um, Future State Teen Titans. It went into then Su it went Suicide Squad also at some point. Did it have a bit of that in? And then it went into Shazam, and then back into uh, Teen Titans number two, and then goes into uh, Shazam number two, and then we find <laughs> out at the end 
that uh, this is to be continued or concluded in Black Adam, which is a backup story I believe we found out is that was in uh, Suicide Squad. Yeah. So this uh, definitely picks up where Teen Titans left off. A lot of the Titans are in this because uh, Shazam is a member of the current um, Justice League team and everything. It's really interesting. If you know what's going on with Billy Batson, that's really disturbing and interesting. There is a possible, uh, not a new character, but a new version of a character at the end that has a completely new look that's kind of an amalgamation of characters. Um, so it was really interesting, but it's also like, oh, there's still one more part to go to really get how this, this story wraps up. So definitely recommend, especially if you've been reading Teen Titans and the Shazam, continue this and also it seems to get uh, Suicide Squad with Black Adam to find out how it kind of wraps up. Um, there was a cool variant cover. This is the Perel variant where you see kind of the main antagonists in the book. The other thing I wanted to talk about is Batman Catwoman number three. So usually we don't make too much note on, you know, when there are threes and fours and everything. Usually the people who want to read it are on it right. and they're, they're you know, reading it themselves. But I did want to note that um, uh, where the previous two issues have been, um, I would say slow paced, but very particular with how they were paced. There wasn't a whole lot of action. It was mostly set up a lot of like, uh, monologue um, talking about you know the relationship from the past present and future of Catwoman and Batman um, this one actually has a pretty cool fight between um, Phantasm and Catwoman that I cool. feel like okay I've been waiting for this scene yeah. not that the other stuff has been good but now this scene pays off in a very interesting way where Phantasm catches Catwoman I don't know if you could ever catch her with her guard down, but in a place you would ex maybe expect to find her with her guard down, and it turns into a really cool scene. Um, especially, uh, it's cool too, because one of the, kind of the shocking moment at the end of issue one that took place in the future, that is um, gone into more detail of what was going on and, and all of that. And the other thing I want to note is that... Uh, Batman and Catwoman's daughter, who in most realities uh, becomes Huntress, uh, you see her kind of uh, uh, mantle she has taken on in this, and uh, who the new commissioner is of Gotham, which was a really fun surprise, and I want to see like th those characters fleshed out more, mm. too, because that was a fun... I always like when they take characters and they put them in you know, new places like, oh, this is the role they moved into or whatever. So that was really cool. But there was a couple of really cool variants for this. So this kind of gives you like, this is pretty accurate cover. Maybe they're not exactly, but Phantasm versus Catwoman. That's, that's like the weather for most of the country right now. <laughs> I know. And this is the Jim Lee cover. And then we have the... Travis Trest variant as well. Okay, so I read Thor number 12. So if you want your Donny Cates, but you don't <laughs> want anything to do with King in Black, this is for you. Um, Cates has yet to really go into, and I don't think he's going to, when this is taking place. I'd assume this is going on before King in Black, but maybe it's after. It's definitely not during. That much is well established at this point. Um, so in the last one, Donald Blake is trying to go after um, all the different people who wielded the hammer, like Throg and people like him. Like Throg, like you throw that out like, you know, just like the frog that has Thor's hammer. No well, pinky. Yes, there is a frog who has Thor's hammer. <laughs> um yeah, so Throg and Lockjaw go up against Donald Blake, and it's a heck of a fight. I mean, there is punching, there's hammering, there's biting. There's hopping? There is there is hopping. Good. Mightiful hopping. <laughs> and uh, a, a battle takes place, the likes of which have not been seen in these pages for <laughs> a little bit. 
Um, other characters, Jane Foster, Donald Blake made her think that he's fine. Well, she's back. She's not gone from this altogether. He didn't trick her and just send her on her way. And it has a surprise ending with the return of a major player. Hmm. That's what I will say. It's last page, last panel, sort of, oh, and that person is back. So we've got some variants here. We've got the Shaw variant. Who is the artist on uh, Crossover. Yep. And he likes to work with his friends. We have the 1 in 25 Klein variant that we are selling to locals and people with our pull box for $22 while supplies last. Getting that throg on. So with him and Lockjaw in it, it's a kind of a Pet Avengers reunion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is cool because Pet Avengers have a pretty big fan base. And, and they act like they know each other too. They're not, yeah. they're not at all like, who are you? <laughs> or anything like that. No. You can tell they're fast friends. Though. That's cool. That's what I want to see from my my <laughs> frog and my big dog. Okay, so this one I will mention also briefly because uh, it is just a one shot, but this is a Mortal Hulk flat line, and uh, I was also I, I skimmed through it. I haven't been completely caught up on a Mortal Hulk, so it's been a uh, it was a little confusing to kind of figure out where I was in it and everything. But they've been doing these one-shots um, because they did announce issue 50 is the last issue of uh, Immortal Hulk. And so to kind of fill in some of the time, make it go a little bit longer, they've been doing these one-shots. This one's by, uh, it's written and drawn by uh, Declan Shalvey. And it's really cool. It is kind of a, uh, what makes, where does his anger come from? And I feel like maybe that's something before but this is kind of does it in a new way uh, there is a new character introduced in this that i think is one of the big reasons people are talking about it it's another uh it's kind of an unexpected character i think when hulk goes against you know you expect him to go up against like abomination or the thing or something like that right but when it's uh maybe a little old lady that doesn't <laughs> quite uh you're wondering how it matches up well it's pretty cool how it all goes down. Uh, there is a definitive end to this issue as well. So, um, you know, character could come up somewhere else. Maybe not. But overall, it's a fun one. This is actually the variant cover, the Nolan variant cover, because we sold out of the main one. Everyone who is on Mortal Hulk got this in their box. So this is the Nolan variant. Yep, and it's a fun uh, one-shot issue. A lot of people are really talking it up. So, more future state. I read, we'll, we'll miss it when it's over, because it's, it's <laughs> nearing o an end. Yep. I mean, most of these are, are issue two of two. Yeah, these are the end of, a, of most of them. So this is Immortal Wonder Woman number two, which is the, the last issue of this. This issue has Wonder Woman at the end of time. She's just flying through space, pondering some things. She's headed to an old ally for certain reasons. They're going to have their last conversations. It's supposed to sort of be just the end of everything. And so as she ponders, she thinks about certain things that are really cool, including the last time she saw Superman. What happened to Superman is kind of revealed in this. And it's a little bit of what you'd expect. I'll say it's satisfying what you see. You know, it's sort of like when you have a hero this big, what what would be a fitting ending for them? So that was really cool. This also has a backup story with Nubia as Wonder Woman in a different time period. Mm -hmm. So that is with that. And here is the variant. It's a great variant. Yeah, by Becky Cloonan. And it does figure in with something that happens in it. They DC has taken Wonder Woman, who was already a major character, and they have blown her up to proportions that <laughs> I, she may be sort of the most important overall cosmic character at this point mm -hmm. from what they've shown in Future State and what they're doing in her current series. Infinite Frontier, all that. Yeah. I mean, as a comic reader, we all know that DC Comics, first and foremost, is Batman. <laughs> you know, Nothing against Superman yeah. and Superman fans. Superman is great. We're happy and all that, but as far as just flat-out numbers, mm -hmm. 
DC is Batman, but Wonder Woman, oh man, they have really poured some some love into her character. And They've given really her the attention her that she always deserved and explored her character in a way that's like, you know, she's she's part god and she's you know they've they've actually started to acknowledge you know those cosmic elements of her character i mean you know in the first immortal wonder woman she's thinking oh batman that was so long ago <laughs> and now in this one she's like superman yeah i remember him oh gosh yeah it's like, so was, that wasn't more that, important? that's the feel i'm getting cool well i'm out of the uh this the normal reading books but I want to show out probably one of the uh, top, top pre-ordered uh, second printings, which is pretty big considering there's been a lot of big second printings. But this is Gwenum vs. Carnage. Uh, this is the number one second printing. I was making sure it wasn't number two. Yep. Number one second printing. It's the uh, Mary Jane Carnage. And this one exploded because, if you yeah. didn't know... Number one had a variant cover, which was a one in fifty. Was it one in fifty? That was the so. Gwen Stacy, the the Gwenum variant, which was done by uh, uh, Lee, who did this one, and it just blew up online. Everyone wanted it. It's really hard to get. Well, they actually made this one really accessible, so this was open order. We could order as many as we want, and got a ton of orders for it, which is really cool. That actually allowing people to get this at a reasonable price and it's just such a beautiful cover so i'm really glad they did this hopefully they kind of continue on with this um putting really good artists and really good covers at a affordable price yep and and just the content you know mary jane turning into carnage yeah it's a big deal yeah. like i think we even after this many series is over i feel like this may be a stays around it's just too good of a setup it's the perfect like right you know it doesn't mess with the normal mary jane this is um spider gwen's mary jane and as big as king and black has been it'd be cool if there were some repercussions mm -hmm. outside of just with eddie brock or, yeah you know yeah this would be a cool Dylan. element that goes off into another, into um ghost spiders ongoing series or something like that mm -hmm. yep so there are some variants I wanted to show off. This is the latest issue of Captain America. This is the Stormbreakers variant done by Patrick Gleason, a rising star. <laughs> um, these were just one per store. Ours is, a, nobody's called for it yet, so it's $20 to the first person who has a subscription. And that's the Stormbreakers us. variant? Yeah, it's, it's really cool too. Just Yeah. It's a great cover. And then the other variant I wanted to show, Abbott number two this week has a one per store variant. We're selling ours for $20. We just like to show off all the big covers mm -hmm. everybody might want to look for out in the wild or at their stores or wherever they go. Cool. And I've got a few variants to show off as well. This uh, is... For Black History Month, Marvel is doing some really cool covers by Souza. So we have the Miles Morales cover for the issue that you talked about a little bit mm -hmm. earlier. And I like that they made him unmasked, too. I just think that's you don't see that a lot on uh, Miles Morales covers. Then there is the Iron Man variant with War Machine. It's really nice. They also have very similar color schemes, kind of a warm background. And then probably the most popular one so far, maybe tied with Miles, is the Ironheart variant. And this is for Champions number four. A lot of big Ironheart fans. And the last one I have to go over today, Future State number <laughs> one has been doing a lot of neat second print variants. The two of them have dropped today. This is the Green Lantern variant. With that John Stewart that is not a Green Lantern, but yeah. former Green Lantern John Stewart. The rugged hero. And here is um, Robin Eternal. Robin Eternal number one second print. And lastly, we've got the Justice League 
second print with the new flash, the, the multiverse flash that a lot of people are very interested in. This character, very mysterious is what I'll say. Yeah. And, and we know that they're going to go on and be in the ongoing Flash book when it comes back. They've already said that that's that it, they're going to be a character for that. In this Justice League book, he's a little bit of a jerk too, to tell you the truth. Hmm. Like, and I don't mean like he's mean, but he just has like an edge to him. So it's weird. So all those are also out this week. So is that that's, it? That's it. Okay, so that is our Tuesday review show. We went over all the comics, all the major ones that we thought people would want to know about. There was still more, but we just always went over more. a few of them. Yeah, always more. We, we go over the ones that we, we want to read and we think that most people are waiting to hear about. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for tuning in. We also, uh, we do, we release this live on Facebook, but then we put it on YouTube right afterwards. Mm -hmm. So if you watch on YouTube, thank you very much. Uh, we're at about 520 subscribers, so Yep. Ever inching our way Ever to inching. that thousand mark. We're over halfway there. But we're so. appreciative of all of those 520 yes. that have come before. You are the base of our rising column. There, there, there you go. You found out early on about what we do here. Every Friday we release we release. release. Every Friday <laughs> we release a video called Comics from the Future where we go over the latest comics that are still open order. So all these ones we talked about mm -hmm. three weeks ago, back when you could order as many as you want. Yep. We told you which ones we thought were sort of better and worse, what's going to be good about them. Some of the covers we show um, have just been released online. I mean, sometimes we put up covers that have just been released hours before our show. So tune in Fridays for that. And I think that's it. We're just going to put up some order details mm -hmm. for anybody who is interested in a, uh, a local store. Um, or rather, we we ship nationally, so yeah. I guess we don't have to be your local store. Well, local local is a more personal <laughs> term. Where that's what your I local that's what I store, meant. whether you're near or far. Th there you go. So, in any case, thank you for tuning in, and we hope you enjoyed the show. Yep. We'll see you next time when we've read another week's worth of comics. Another seventy books or yeah. whatever. <laughs> All right. Well, have a good day.